My, do we have a word from God for you tonight. I want you to go with us into the great sanctuary. People are being touched. My message was on this topic. Three great truths that are significant concerning his resurrection. Number one is this. It was not possible that the bands of death could hold our Lord. Number two, it was not possible that the bands of death could hold his kingdom. And number three, it's not possible for any bands of death to bind any one that is his. When God gets ready to bring you out, no devil can hold you in. So we want you to go with us tonight right here into the big sanctuary. Lives are being changed. People are worshiping God. Welcome to Life Change right here at East Calhoun. that have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 24, and let's stand for the reading and the honoring of this one scripture this morning. I have sought the Lord concerning what he'd have me to preach, and I want to speak to you concerning three significant truths that affect us concerning Christ's resurrection. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 24 reads, whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be hold in of it. Or we could say God untied the death ropes that were ripped around Jesus and raised him up because death was no match for the power of the Son of God. Now, Father, help me today. I pray, God, that you would give me a gift of utterance and a holy unction. Let the word connect. And, Father, I pray that you'll touch hearts and change lives. And in this altar, show us your glory. And all God's people said, you may be seated. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ literally felt the pangs of death that gripped around him and laid hold of his body. And it was very real. The anguish, the suffering, the pain, and the life flowing out of his body that every time his heart beat, his life poured out through his shed blood. Yet according to the word of God, his body was loose from the pains of death by his resurrection. Now this morning I want us to look at three significant truths concerning his resurrection. Number one is this. It was not possible that the bands of death could hold our Lord. For the Bible tells us that he had power over the bondage of death. But the question must be asked this morning, where did this power come from? A, it came from the command of the Father that he should take his life again. John 10, 18 said, Jesus said, 
No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my Father. See, he rose in obedience to the Father. Where did this power come from? Be his deity. Jesus Christ was and is in union with the Godhead. Jesus Christ is absolutely perfect. He had never sinned. Where did this power come from? See, it came from the completion of Christ paying the sin debt. 1 John 2, 2 says, and He is the perpetuation, which means He took our place for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. See, when He fully paid the sin debt on the cross... It was fulfilled, and when it was, sin lost its power over him. Therefore, he had to be freed. So where did this power come from? D, the purpose and the plan of God. When Jesus Christ, remember, died on the cross, he paid the full sin debt. Therefore, he had to be freed. And when he was freed, then everyone who came to him, and all who will come to him through faith in his shed blood must be freed as well. John 14, 19, Jesus said, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, and because I live, ye shall live also. You know, if there had been no resurrection, we would have no life today. There would be no world today. Because without his resurrection, we would have, number one, no assurance of our resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 17 reads, And if Christ be not raised from the dead, your faith is in vain, and ye are yet dead in your sins. Without his resurrection, number two, we would have no justification. What does justification mean? It means that when you're justified by his blood, it's just as if you had never sinned. Somebody missed a good place to shout right there. You're totally free by his blood. Romans 4.25 reads, Who was delivered for our offenses and who was raised again for the purpose of our justification. Without his resurrection, number three, we would have no intercessor in heaven. And we know that right now, Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And he's not praying for himself. He's talking about you, and he's talking about me. Also, understand, had he not raised from the dead, he would not have been able to ascend into heaven. So number one, I want you to realize, it was not possible that the bands of death could hold Jesus in the grave. Now, the second significant truth of the resurrection is this. It's not possible that any bands should hold his kingdom. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock, what's the rock? The rock of the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The devil does not have enough power. Let him do his best. He can't stop the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He can't do it. Really, what I've learned in my life, the more the church is attacked, the mightier it grows. A, it doesn't matter how strong error may seem. It cannot stop the victory of the truth. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word will forever stand. Greek philosophy is waning. The power of Rome that used to control the world now only has a few organ grinders with a couple of monkeys. It's all passed away. And I'll tell you this, so will every other evil power that tries to hinder the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand this, the wisdom of evil can't resist his wisdom. When he was on earth, he confounded the wise. They heard him speak and they said, hey, 
Never a man spake like this man. Never a man has said the things that this man has said. That happened while he was on earth. And you know what? Today, by the high power of his Holy Spirit, it will continue until he returns. 1 Corinthians 1.20 said, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolishness of the world to confound the wise? And also, see, the influence of this world will not dim the flame of His Spirit. There's no way that evil can quench the fire of Almighty God. John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have a lot of trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. What are you trying to say, Pastor Reed? I'm trying to say he can give you peace in a troubled situation. He can give you help in a helpless situation. He can give you hope in a hopeless situation. And I've got a word from God for, to, for you this morning. You're not going under. You're going over. Put your hands together and praise him. Say this. Say, if God be for me. Who could be against me? So the second significant truth concerning his resurrection is this. It not, it's not possible that the powers of hell could hold any of his kingdom. And then third and lastly, the third significant truth about his resurrection is this. It is not possible to hold in bondage anything that is his. Remember Paul and Silas in Acts 16 we're pulled in jail, and the Bible tells us, and at midnight, you know why it says midnight? Because that's when things are worse. If you're sicker, you get sicker at midnight. If you've got a fever, it gets highest at midnight. When troubles come, they feel more trouble that bears down on you and at midnight. But at midnight, Paul and Silas didn't grumble and complain and say, gloom, despair, and misery on me. They didn't say, why am I in this trouble? But the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Can I preach this much? Do you know anybody can praise God when everything's going good? A backslid deacon can praise God when everything's going good. But what do you do when you get, as Ma Reed would say, between a rock and a hard place? What do you do when all the powers of hell come against you and you get up and go, has got up and gone? What do you do when you have no, feel like you have nowhere to turn? You know what you do? You lift up your hands and you give God praise. Now I'll tell you this. There may be pressures all around you, but I have made up my mind. As for me and my house, look at somebody and say, my house. We're going to praise the Lord. We're not going to get depressed. You can be seated. Some people get up every morning and look at the clock and say, Oh, good Lord, it's morning. But you don't do that. You get up and cut the clock off and you say, Good morning, Lord. Some get up every day and look at their shoes 20 minutes to get enough courage to put them on. But we don't do that as Christians. We get up and say, Hey, this is the day the Lord hath made and I'm going to be glad and I'm going to rejoice in it. And you know what? We believe that God deserves to be praised and worshipped, especially on Sunday morning. So if we get up, we're going to come to church tired. We're going to come to church if we have to broke. We're going to come to church if we have to have depressed or discouraged. But you know what? We believe that God deserves the praise and the worship that of at least one service per week. Somebody say amen. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. 
and the prisoners heard them. What do you mean, Pastor Reed? It's not just about you. But when you get a breakthrough in your life, it brings breakthrough to everybody around you, especially to your family. The next verse said, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken, and immediately the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Some of you don't realize that you hold the key of significance to praise God so that your family might come out of bondage. I want to go on record by saying this morning the bands of satanic oppression cannot keep one of God's children in when God gets ready to bring them out. Reach over and high five, high five somebody and say, Honey, I'm coming out. See, the child of God can't be kept in when God gets ready to bring you out. Well, Pastor, I'm in a trial. Do you know a trial has only a lifespan and at the end of it, you're coming out? I believe there's somebody this morning, you've been to hell and back. I mean, you have fought devils and demons and it seems like you've gone as far as you can go. And you came to church this morning and in the back seat, the children were fussing and raising cane. But you said, no, I'm going to go to church anyway. I am not going to let no devil take my praise. So you're here this morning and you know what? Right now, God's bringing you out. You're coming out. You're victorious in Jesus' name. The child of God will not be held captive by tribulation and trouble, will not be held captive by temptation or oppression. Because Psalms 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Please don't stop there. Because the Lord... Deliver them out of them all. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. The poor struggling sinner can escape the bonds of guilt, his doubts, and Satan in the world. Because Psalms 127.4 says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler of the hunter. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Also in closing, the bodies of the saints shall not be held in the grave. The Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. <clears throat> well, Brother Reed, I, I, I just don't much believe in shouting. I believe that if it, you know, I, I just keep it in my heart. Honey, this thing began with a shout, and it's going to end with a shout. <clears throat> I don't believe in heaven they're singing wasted years real soft anyway. Or, oh, or I don't believe in heaven they're singing hold the fort Jesus please come rescue me. But I believe they're singing onward Christian soldiers fighting under war with the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord himself. I don't want another Lord. I don't need Confucius. I don't need Buddha. I don't need Allah. When they saw Jesus going up they stood there looking up, and the angel says, Why stand ye gazing? I guess I would have gazed too with my mouth gaping open. And the angel said, This same Jesus that you've seen go up is going to come again. You know what? I don't want another Jesus. I don't want anybody else. I want the same one that stood at the grave. And on the third day, he kicked the bottom out of the grave. And he stood and said, I am he that was dead, but behold, I'm not dead anymore. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Somebody get on your feet. Stand on your feet and shout, he's alive. Somebody shout, he's alive. I want you to know that our Lord has risen from the dead and nothing but good can come from that. So this morning, he said, because I live, you shall live also. When he came into that grave, listen to this, he brought us out with him. 
He brought you out with him. He brought me out with him. So this morning, let's rise in resurrection light. This Bible says the power that raised Jesus from the dead is right under your navel. Put your hand on your navel and say, right there it is. So you know what? We're going to rise in his rising. And we're going to be free in his freeing. And no weapon formed against us is going to prosper because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Put your hands together. Amen. Oh, come on. Somebody shout, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm a whosoever and you're a whosoever, so that means us. So right now, let's go before the Lord in prayer. And if you pray this prayer and believe God, you're going to be born again and experience real life change. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. And Lord, we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We believe in our heart that you raised Christ from the dead. And now, Lord, by faith in your word, we believe that we are saved. And we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Man, that's great. You prayed that prayer and believe it. The Lord's come in your heart. Once and for all. Your kingdom is forever 